Hey everyone, in this video we will see how to cancel approval requests with Power Automate. And before we get started, if you want to learn more about Power Automate, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. So Power Automate has this approvals connector that allows us to create new approvals or to wait for the processing of an existing approval, but we don't have so far any dedicated action to cancel any pending approval requests. But the good news here is that we can use and work around for it. And this is exactly what we'll do into this video. And here, as you can see, I already have this pretty straightforward flow. We are basically capturing a Microsoft form submission, uh, getting the response details from this form submission, and then creating an approval related to that. This form is specifically uh, this one here. So it's just an event enrollment form where we are asking the user to provide their email address, uh, also to provide the event that they want to attend. And if they want to enroll to this event or actually withdraw an existing enrollment to this event. And right after the user submits this form, uh, Power Automate will basically create an approval. So far, we are not doing any branching related to the enrollment or withdrawal option of the user. So if I make a form submission right now, for example, uh, even keeping this withdrawal uh, as the option of enrollment, you will see that uh, a new approval request will be created because we are not treating uh, that specific scenario in flow so far. So I submitted the form. Let's come here to the approvals into Power Automate. I'll just refresh it. And yes, right here, as you can see, uh, this is the approval request generated for uh, this form submission. We basically have into the title this uh, event enrollment, then the name of the event, and then the email address of the user. Uh, these two pieces of information, they are being captured uh, dynamically. So here, as you can see in our flow, the title uh, has only this event enrollment, and then we've always followed this default template where we are capturing the name of the event and the user email address. And another thing that you may notice, if you already don't know about it, is that whenever we create a new approval in Power Automate, a new record is created also into this Metaverse approvals table. And here we have a few information such as the name of the approval, when it was created, the details. Uh, so far, we still don't have these new records. I must just refresh here uh, this page and you will see it right now. And yes, as you can see here, we have the event enrollment for the test two at digitalme.net. We have the details. We also have the current status and status reason of this approval request. As you can see here, it is currently pending. And that's the same information displayed here into the Power Automate approvals or even in your approvals app uh, for Teams. So what we need to do right now, uh, we need to come back to our flow and we now will handle the scenario of uh, canceling this approval request. So whenever someone submits this form again and select the withdraw option uh, and here, uh, this person must provide the same email address to respond to an existing approval request and the same event. So basically, uh, we'll match the email address and the event to the name uh, existing here into this approval. We will cancel that with Power Automate by simply changing the properties from the corresponding record into the approvals delivery table. And for that, let's simply create a new step here. And this step will be a condition. So select here the control group and then the condition. Uh, here we want to test if this question for the enrollment or withdrawal of the event is responded as enroll. And if yes, we will simply create an approval in that scenario. And if it's not, we'll then cancel that approval by uh, updating the dataverse records. And the first thing that we have to do into this false block is to list the rows from the approvals table. And here I'll simply select this list rows action. Uh, here I'll select the approvals table. And then we want this list rows action to retrieve only the record corresponding to the approval to be canceled, which will basically have a title including the attendee email address and the event name. So basically uh, what we want to do here is to filter the title column and for that we will need the logic name of this title column so we can find this logic name by coming here to the dataverse table uh, selecting the title column and then we go to the edit column and here once we expand these advanced options we can find the logical name over here i will also let in the video description the link to a blog where i explain how can you find logical names for uh, dataverse columns and for sharepoint columns 
and then here back to Power Automate into our filter query, you can simply pass the logical name of this title column. Then we use the equals operator. We also have a video here in the channel about these filter queries if you don't know how to work with them. And then we can simply pass what is the title that we want to use as a filter for this uh, approval request. I will simply open here single quotes since we are working with a string. And then I will just uh, copy this uh, title over here from the create and approval step because it will be the same strategy, right? We are simply having the event enrollment as a static content at the beginning. Then you have the event name as a dynamic content at the middle. And at the end, you have uh, the email address also as dynamic content. So this uh, filter query must be enough to retrieve only the Dataverse record corresponding to the approval request that we want to cancel. So we are not done yet. Uh, we are so far retrieving the record to be canceled, but we also need to include a new step over here to actually uh, cancel this record. And we'll use an update row action for that from the Microsoft Dataverse connector as well. And here we need to pass first the name of the table. Again, we are working with the approvals table. And we also need to pass the row ID. And for that, we will work with an expression that will access the ID from the single record retrieved by the list rows. And I will start this expression by passing the dynamic content corresponding to the value value property of the list rows. I will then open uh, square brackets and pass the number zero. Here I'm basically accessing the first record from this body value property. This body value is an array of objects retrieved from a proposed table. And since we include a filter to the title, it must retrieve only the record corresponding to the approval request that we want to cancel. And finally, I need to access individually the approvals property from this record. So I'll open the square brackets again. I will also open single quotes. And then I'll come here to our Dataverse table to now capture uh, what is the logical name of this um, approval column. So again, I can come to the edit column and expand the advanced options. And here I will find its logical name. I will then copy it, come back to Power Automate. And here uh, I will finally pass this property between the single quotes and the single brackets. This property called approval corresponds to the unique ID of the record in the Dataverse table. And again, if this step is still not clear to you, we are basically accessing the approval ID property from the first record, which we are specifying here with the zero, of the body value property from the list rows action. So this expression is fine. Let's hit add. And now we need to populate a few of the properties from this updater row action. Starting by the stage, we have to set the stage equals to complete. And we also have to set the status reason equals to canceled. And we also need to use a few advanced parameters. Those parameters are basically the result, then also the status, and finally the completed one. So here into the completed one, we just need to pass the date and time when we are canceling this approval. Uh, it's important because without that, we'll have this uh, approval request even after canceled without an actual complete a date, just like in this example over here. Uh, so for passing the current date and time, you can simply come here and set the expression UTC now. Yeah, that must be enough. And then for the result, you can pass whatever message you want. For example, here, uh, when I was running a few tests for this video, I just uh, set this property as withdrawn by the user, but you necessarily have to set the result property as cancel and canceled with only one L because otherwise the approvals app for Microsoft Teams won't understand that approval as a cancel one. If you pass here anything else like or withdrawn, for example, it may be good for your uh, approvals in Power Automate. You'll be able to see this outcome directly there, but in your Teams app, it will still appear as requested and not as canceled. So make sure to set this result equals to cancel with a single L. And then for the status, I'll simply set as an active. And now we can save our flow. And we can now come back to our form and make a new submission. Uh, this submission will have the same event uh, as before when we created the approval. We also have here the withdrawal selected. And just before we move forward, just to uh, make it clear to you, we have it here. This approval still pending. It's not approved, not rejected. So after you submit the form, you see that this approval 
will be removed from here and will be included here in the history. So let's come here, let's submit it. So the form was submitted. Um, so let me now come here to the approvals. Let's refresh it. And as you can see, we don't have it here anymore into the received tab. If you now come to the history, it has a status equals to cancel. If I expand this request, you also see that we have here under the activity, uh, this approval mentioned as cancel. And if I even open my Teams approval app that I have here in another window, you can see that uh, the current status of this approval is cancel. And if you now come to our Dataverse table, you can see that this approval request now has a status equal to cancel. So we can test that again if you want. So we can come here and say, for example, test three at digital.net. Now let's take the approvals workshop, let's enroll, submit it. And now if you come to the approvals and the received ones and refresh it, we have a new approval for this uh, test three. And if you come here to the form, submit it again, select the same event, and now withdraw it, submit the form, and then we come back to the approvals, refresh it. You see that it's gone again, and here in the history, we have this same approval, but now with the outcome equals to cancel. And here again, if we expand the details of this approval, we can see that we have a created and a cancel activity. So that's how you can approve requests in Power Automate. If you have any questions or ideas related to this strategy, let me know in the comment section and see you in the next video.